We're turning now to our top story, the Productivity Commission's report on carbon emission policies. And to discuss that report, I was joined a short time ago from Armidale by the independent MP for New England, Tony Windsor. Tony Windsor, thanks for joining us. My pleasure, Tony. Uh, now, you've had the report for uh, a number of days, so I imagine you've had a chance to consider it properly. Now, is this really the game-changer the government was hoping for? Well, I don't know about game changer. Obviously, the structure of any emissions trading scheme or carbon tax arrangement uh, has to be determined yet, and uh, there's a number of players in there that may change the game at any, any time. But, but it does answer two substantive questions that, that I raised probably six months ago now, one being, is the rest of the world doing something or is it doing nothing? I think uh, the answer is yes. Uh, the, the rest of the world is uh, moving in a direction. The, the second one, I think, has been obvious to anybody uh, in recent months, is that uh, if you are going to address this issue, a carbon uh, pricing mechanism is the way to address it. As opposed to the coalition form of direct action, their policy of direct action? Well, I think what the Productivity Commission's report shows that uh, the most cost-effective way of, uh, of dealing with the issue is through some sort of pricing mechanism to price carbon. It does talk about some of the direct action uh, issues uh, which are a lot more expensive uh, and, uh, and a lot more difficult in a sense uh, to obtain uh, you know, quite big reductions in emissions. So I'm not suggesting that, that the two can't run parallel but it's pretty obvious I think uh, to most people now that uh, a direct action campaign would either be very, very expensive to achieve an outcome or uh, just be more tokenistic in terms of uh, uh, the sort of marginal outcome that it would achieve. I'll come back to that in a moment. First, there, there is uh, a criti criticism of the uh, productivity report. It's coming from inside uh, business circles, inside the Business Council of Australia, for example, that it's too limited a study. It was conducted too quickly under political pressure and over too few countries. How do you respond to that? Well, I think they've chosen you know, some model countries, some with uh, emissions trading schemes, some with sort of partial schemes, uh, others with uh, a whole range of policies like the United States and China that uh, are trying to uh, reduce their emissions. And what shows up that the, the, the most costly way of doing it is uh, uh, through some of the policies, and Australia is uh, uh, guilty as that as well, uh, in terms of some of the policies that we've had. You know, cash for clunkers, for instance, was about $400 a tonne for each tonne of abatement. Uh, and I, I guess the, the report could have been uh, longer and larger, but I think it, it addresses the key indicators of, you know, it looked at 1,000 uh, emissions policies uh, across, uh, I think, the seven countries. Uh, so, yeah, that's a lot of policy out there, uh, a lot of things to try and assess, and, the, and they admit in the report that uh, in some cases they're trying to compare apples and oranges, but in terms of answering the broader questions, uh, is the rest of the world doing something? I think uh, it's pretty obvious to most people now that uh, most people or most countries are trying to uh, address this issue and uh, uh, I've always argued that uh, Australia should play a role in that and obviously uh, I think the, the report will add impetus to that role. Can you explain this? If Australia, without undertaking any new measures, is now in the middle range of these countries in their efforts to uh, deal with climate change. Um, that is to say about average, I suppose. Why do we need to move ahead of our competitors? Well, I think there's other countries that are doing things as well. You know, the, the, the UK, for instance, and that's uh, since the Productivity Commission uh, report has been printed, uh, that uh, they're, they're embarking on quite dramatic changes again. Uh, and other parts of Europe as well. Uh, I, I think there is a bit of a, uh, a push globally to do it. But the, the issue was that uh, the rest of the world was doing nothing and, and Australia uh, wasn't doing much really at all either. Uh, now we find that the rest of the world is doing something and Australia is a middle order power, not a leader. So uh, I think uh, uh, it presents a stage that we should uh, have a very, uh, a very hard look at. OK, the Coalition has jumped on this statement uh, on page 50 of the report, which says that no country... Can